Hello, my name is Beth Dixon and I am the Math Lab Coordinator and I work in MBSS 222 in the Math and Behavioral Social Science building. And it is my job to help students through their math courses here at Walter State Community College. If you need help with your math, please come and see me and I will be glad to give you some assistance. Today's short lesson is on uniform distribution for our statistics course. And I'm going to do a short example on uniform uh, distributions as a example of how to do the problems um, that are located in our text as a, an example and to give you some additional help that will supplement the lesson that your teacher has already given. And as always, these lessons are not meant to replace the student, for the student, the teacher's lectures, uh, but to supplement them and give the students additional examples to look at. So let's look, first of all, at the example that I have. And um, in dealing with uh, uniform distributions, um, we do not have a lot of examples to pull from. So for this one, I've kind of stretched it, and it uh, may not be the best example, but it is the example I came up with. And it says the speed of drivers given speeding tickets at the red light cameras at Walmart is uniformly distributed between 46 miles per hour and 86 miles per hour. Find the probability that a ticketed driver's speed is between 55 and 60 miles per hour. And again, we're assuming and I'm being given as a statement that they're uniformly distributed. Now, I'm stating that even though we may decide later that maybe they're not uniformly, but we're going to assume at this point that it's a uniform distribu distribution and that every speed is equally likely to occur between 46 and 86 miles per hour. Um, and yes, I know that I've set a top speed there um, as a limit, even though technically um, you could go more than 86 miles an hour. But for our example, we're going to say that the speeds between 46 and 86 miles per hour are all equally likely to occur. Now, if I was looking for one specific speed between 46 and 86, that one particular speed we wouldn't be interested in because that particular speed would be actually considered almost zero likelihood to occur because that particular speed over the continuous distribution, um, that probability would be practically zero because there's so many different speeds occurring. But if I take and subtract and get the idea here, and I've got a nice drawing down here that I want you to look at. What we have is that we have all speeds located from 1 to the, this is the top to the low. And in our case, our low number is 46. And our top number here is 86. And between those two speeds, 86 minus 46 to give me 40. And that creates our rectangle here. And in this rectangle, the probability of all of this rectangle is equal to 1. And the area of any rectangle can be found by the base times the height. Well, if that area is 1, because it's the probability, and we know all probability adds up to be 1, and the base between 86 and 46 is equal to 40, what is this height equal to? And that height is equal to an unknown. Well, we can use our algebra here to solve for that unknown by simply dividing by 40. And that height is given by 1 over 40. Or we can use the formula 1 
over B minus A. 86 minus 46, and the area divided by that difference, 1 over 40. And that will give us our area. So we know now that our height is 1 40th, and our base is 40 to give us this whole area of probability of 1. But our problem wasn't to figure out what our distribution looked like. Our problem asked us to do something. And as you read word problems, it's always to find the action verb. Okay? English language here. It's told us to find. So it said to find the probability of what? That a ticketed driver's speed is between 55 and 60. Well, 55 and 60 would fall between somewhere here and here. And I don't have to be accurate in scale. I just have to know that 55 and 60 would fall in between somewhere in my graph. And I'm going to draw my little lines there up. And I'm going to shade in that area. And I've shaded in that area between 55 and 60. And I want to find the area of this shaded part. And again, it forms a rectangle. Well, the base of this rectangle is 60 minus 55, which is 5. And to find an area, we need to multiply the base times the height. That's the base. I need a height. Well, the height is still going to be this height that I have here, and that height is going to be 1 40th. And so that's going to be 1 40th. And 5 times 1 40th would be 5 over 40 or 1 8th. And remember that you can use your calculator to help you with your fractions if you need to. So the probability and the way that we would write that with our notation is P for probability. X, a big giant X, to represent the numbers that are represented here. And we want it between. And any time we write between, we put the X between and little less than signs. And then our smaller number, which would be 55. Our larger number, 60. So then that shows that X is between 55 and 60 is equal to that 1 8. And to make it easy on your teacher, I block out my answer so my teacher can find that, and that's always a good practice for your teacher. And how did we find that? We have multiplied the base times the height. And that's how we do our uniform distribution. For additional help on this topic, please come by and see us in the math lab.